Now to a dire warning about climate change. According to a new report, experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. More than 15,000 scientists are sounding an alarm about climate change. Time is running out. A warning to humanity. We cannot solve a crisis without treating it as a crisis. If unprecedented changes are not made and made soon, there will be irreversible damage to the planet. It would likely mean more erratic weather, dangerous heat waves, rising sea levels, and dying coral reefs. If we don't take action, the collapse of our civilizations and the extinction of much of the natural world is on the horizon. You only talk about moving forward with the same bad ideas that got us into this mess. You say you love your children above all else, and yet you are stealing their future in front of their very eyes. Right now, we're facing a man-made disaster of global scale. Our greatest threat in thousands of years, climate change. Heavenly Father, please help us. current situations of the coral reefs globally is, is pretty much worrying. That has to do with climate change and the increase of the sea surface temperature. And this is uh, at the moment inevitable that things are going to change and that coral reefs are declining because of that. Coral are living together, I, they have a symbiosis which is very unique. They are animals, but at the same time they have inside the skin, inside the tissue, they have millions of, of small algae which are endosymbionts. The problem is it's when the temperature increases, the algae react to that, the coral feel it. Then the symbiosis that the corals have with the zooxanthellae, the microscopic algae that live inside the coral, that symbiosis disrupts. And that means that the corals lose their main engine. In fact, these microalgae produce up to 90% of the coral's food, of their energy supply. And then they expel the algae the algae is going away and what you get, you get a tissue of the coral without the algae, so it's all transparent and you see the white bone, the white skeleton of the coral and this is why we call it mass bleaching. They leave them defenseless, they leave them not able to produce food.
pre-industrial ages, coral bleaching occurred maybe every 50 to 100 years. And then the reefs had enough time to recover from such a devastating event. However, nowadays, coral bleaching events happen worldwide every year. And some reefs, such as the iconic Great Barrier Reef, yeah, they have bleached several times within the last three years. And this is too much for a reef to, to recover. As long as the global warming continues, we're going to experience more and more and more bleaching events. Around 500 million people are somehow dependent on these coral reefs for their income, for their food, for, for tourism, for uh, coastal protection. Most of the fish we eat, they reproduce and grow, not live, but grow in the coral reefs. And so this is one thing. The other services that give us, they protect the beach from waves. Okay, it's like a wave break. We have around two meters between us and the sea level, but when talking about the Maldives or Fiji or other small islands with a population over there, they don't have these two meters. The coral reef, if you want to talk money-wise, worth around 70 billion dollars worldwide. This is how we're talking about tourism, um, medicine, food, protection from, from the sea. And of course you have the eth ethical reason. The biodiversity there is like the rainforest. We call it the rainforest of the sea. They actually are a kind of, a kind of oasis. Oasis of, of high diversity, high productivity, and this is under treatment now. If we lose these coral reefs, 500 million people will be in serious trouble. The Great Barrier Reef we have already lost for a significant part. And if we don't do anything, many more will follow. And now we also talk as if the coral reefs would be the only victims of climate change. But we all know that there is serious other problems as well associated to the same increase in carbon dioxide levels. We need to act 30 years ago. We were a bit too late. I'm up, I hope that I'm, we're not too late. I'm afraid that my grandkid or my kid will not see the reef, the coral reef. And this is the reality. Well, at the moment, there is only one way in, we, in which we can really save the reefs for future generations, and that is to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. We don't have any many options. The only one option we have is to stop producing so much, uh, so much CO2. Whether that will be enough, that is the question, and we do have to take additional measures. So since the start of the Industrial Revolution, we have lost 50% of our world forests. If we could get back that amount of forests in our world, then we would sequester at least one-fourth of the current amount of carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere. So in this way, we could save the coral reefs, at least for the next 50 years, if we make the choice to reduce carbon dioxide emissions 
and to reforestate on a really large scale. That is at the moment our only chance. And it's your turn to take this, uh, this opportunity to, to doing this change. Because it's a very important, important factor. The conclusion is that as long as people think only of by, about themselves, there's no solution. We have to be optimistic, but we have to be to be wise. Every year that we fail to take action, we will lose another few percent of the current coral reefs. If we decide to reduce climate change and to bring back these carbon dioxide levels to acceptable levels, not only the coral reefs will benefit, but the whole world will actually benefit. If you don't do it, nobody is doing it for you.